Hey, welcome back to the podcast. Um, I hope that you guys are as excited as I am about this this shift, this change, this up leveling, this upgrade, I, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm really excited about this shift and focusing more on, well, just the more we step into who we are, the more impact we can make, the more women of influence we can become. And the more that we can be who we're called to be, right? So today I I want to talk about something that is, um, this is a common, common thing that I'm seeing. Um, this is something that I've struggled with my whole life. And it's such a, a simple thing, but we get wrapped around it and we, um, the we want something change to change. The first thing we change, the first thing we look at is our behavior. What things are we doing? What habits do we have? What habits can we add? What, um, what bad things are we doing that we need to take away? And because we're looking, we want results, right? We want the certain results. And it's clearly our behaviors, our actions that are stopping us from getting the results. So what do we do? We go and we, well, we listen to podcasts. Yes, I hear the irony in that. Um, we um, we read books. We go and we see, um, we have been programmed. We have been programmed that someone else knows more about you than you do. That if we're, if something's going wrong, we must be doing something wrong. Um, and we've been programmed and I'm not, I love reading books. I read books every day. I read all the time. Like I have a goal of 24 books a year um, that typically I don't hit all the way, but I've gotten close. Um, I get closer and closer. So I'm not saying that I don't love books. So don't hear that. Don't hear what I'm not saying. But we have been programmed that someone else knows how to do it better. Hold that thought. I'll go back there later. But so we, we do books, we go to Bible studies, we, um, we go to therapy, we go and talk to all these people about what result we want. And we talk about what is going wrong. And we talk about what we're doing or what we need to do. How many times you're like, I just need to get to the gym. I just need to eat healthier. I just need to change the way I think about this. I just need to, um, I just need a new outfit. I just need a new house. I just need to go on a trip. I just need um, you. all of these things that you want something, something needs to change in order to get it. And you're not wrong completely. But the problem is, is our behaviors and our actions are not actually what our first step to change is. Yes, we may need, that may come. We may need to change. Like if we want to, I really want Wonder Woman arms. Like the one, her arms are amazing, right? Um, They're toned, they're not big, but they're toned. And, and I know that if I want them, I have to do something to get them, right? I have to go to the gym, I have to. And so my first thought was, okay, just go and start working out, go lift weights, go and, but the problem is, is that it depends on willpower. It depends on motivation. It depends on feeling like going to the gym or working it out in your calendar, right? Right, am I, okay, like the problem is, if you know that's what you need to do, why haven't you done that already? Why is it that you've done it and you're like, okay, I've been to the gym. I can, um, I can go like, I've been to the gym. I have worked out. I, why don't you have it? Well, it's the consistency, right? Okay. So let's just change that behavior. Let's go through and like, why, why can't I go to the gym for 30 days straight? Why have I not made it a priority? There, we're getting a little closer. Why am I so busy? Why we ask we these things that we want to do, right? We just can't seem to make them happen and make that lasting change. Because it's not our behavior 
that directly correlates to the result that we want. It's part of it, but it's not all of it. To get the results that we want, we look at behavior, but then we go step back is what causes our behaviors? What determines our behaviors? And it's our beliefs. If we want a new result, we need a new belief. Now I've talked about how, what is a belief? A belief is a thought paired with emotion thought over time. It doesn't have to be true to be a belief. It blows my mind to think that because it's like, well, why would we believe something that's not true? Why would that be a belief about myself? How many of you at like age 20 thought you were overweight or you had a, like the pooch, um, under your, you know, under your belly button. And at that point you're like, oh, the belief that that's true. And then you get into your mid forties and you realize, oh man, I wish I was as fat as I used to think I was in my twenties. I wish that that was the only problem. Okay. That's, I get that. That's not what, where everyone went to, but what belief do you recognize now that it is something you believed that has actually been proved false? Our beliefs are not necessarily true. And in fact, our beliefs are typically kept to keep men to keep us safe and not make, keep us or make us successful. So if there's something that we want, we have to determine what our direct belief is about that thing. And then we have to decide what's true or rewrite it to be true. What is true? Is it true or is it false? Is it keeping us safe or is it helping us be successful? An example of my Wonder Woman arms is, and again, I recognize that this is a silly-ish, um, but the behavior I need is to go to the gym. If I don't believe that I that it will work, that I can actually get it, that I have that I'm someone who can go to the gym four or five times a week in order to get that, the behaviors won't follow. If you want to be a healthy person, you have to have healthy beliefs. You have to believe what a healthy person believes. You get to decide those. But we don't take time to figure out who we're being before we start changing the actions. If you don't address the belief, willpower and motivation will run out. You'll go to the gym for 10 days over the next two weeks and then life happens. And because you have not started working on that belief that you are someone who is healthy or who has the capability, who already has the Wonder Woman arms, you won't get the results that you're looking for. If you want to be a good parent and all you do is change a behavior and say, okay, I'm going to make sure that I spend quality time with each of my kids for an hour a day for the rest of the time they're at home. That's great. But what is a good parent even mean? What does it look like? What, how does it defined? by you? How is it defined by your kids? How is it defined by your teen? Because I guarantee me spending an hour a day with my 15-year-old son is not his idea of a good mom, like dedicated, like one-on-one, let's, um, let's just stare at each other and talk about our feelings. Like that is not what his definition of a good mom would be. Being there and listening to him being there and playing video games with him or a game, making him be in that mean mom and make him go outside and play cornhole with me. But I need to address the belief of what do I believe a good mom is? And that's something that even as time has gone, like I have a 15 and a half year old now. What a good mom when they were two is not the same as definition as a good mom when they're 15, almost 16. 
Now it's more of a guiding and mentor. It's a let them take the lead. Let them have independence. It's more of a let me show them and demonstrate and model how to do something versus show them how to do it or do that for them. They may want you to do it for them, but that doesn't help them grow, right? So is that what a definition of a good mom is now? Because we're always looking at who are we becoming? What is the intention? And looking at our beliefs is no different. Our beliefs are constantly changing. Unfortunately, the world affects us more than we realize. Something that you, that's why like hearing things over and over Actually, you start to kind of go numb to them or you're like, okay, well, I see their point and it doesn't affect you as much. Your belief may be changing. And so you need to address that. If you look at just the behaviors that you're doing, you're missing a vital piece of what you can do to change, to transform, to shift. Now you're probably asking yourself, okay, Tammy, that's great, but how do I look at my beliefs? How do I discover what my beliefs are? And that is, so that's a little more complicated, a little more, and it's not, not complicated. It's easy, but we have to be intentional. It's simple, simple, not easy. Like it, the idea, the concept is easy, but we're not trained. We're not, we're programmed to not listen to ourselves. We're programmed to not um, listen to our thoughts, to, to look to others for advice we want. And now like we Google it instead of, you know, wrestling with it, what we believe on our own or what some, what, you know, working out a puzzle. It's like a Sudoku puzzle where you went from a level one to now you're on level five and you can't get it done in the same amount of time. Crossword puzzle, a whatever it is, but as you grow your, your beliefs and your the problems that you're and the opportunities that you're facing grow as well. So it's a simple way, but it's something that we're not programmed to do. We're programmed to go and look for someone else to give us the answer. When sometimes what we need to do is sit and we need to wrestle with it our, on our own. We need to get quiet and we need to, to look in with, within ourselves, see how God created us, how, what he has put in like how, um, well, how the information we already have is playing a factor. You cannot find what you believe by reading a book. Now you might get some ideas of what you want to believe. You might get some ideas of, um, of what others believe. And so it might be a great start, but what you need to do in order to get to your beliefs is get quiet and start listening to your thoughts. Asking yourself, what what do I believe right now? What is the, what thought am I having right now about this? Who do I believe that I am in this? What do I believe about myself? For me, with this going back to these Wonder Woman arms is I I believe that I actually don't need to go to the gym in order to get them. I can do push-ups right where I'm at. I can do um, lifts. I can do, um, I can use what I have around me. I can do chair dips. You know, like I started believing myself that, okay, I don't need to go anywhere to get them. It doesn't take an hour, four to 12 times a week. It takes consistent 10 minute action. And I believe that I can take 10 minutes of action. I believe I'm someone who cares enough about being strong because not for today, but for 30 years from now, I want to be able to move. I want to be able to lift things. I want to be able to, to be active. And by believing that today, believing I am someone who's can, is active and move, what would an active person do? She would see an opportunity and take it. But the thing is, it was that belief because the habit of going to the gym four times a week for an hour each time, it's not always possible in my life. 
the gym is 30 minutes away. I've got kids who have different events. I have clients. I have um, a partner. I have all of these things going on. And sometimes, sometimes I have to put what I want on the back burner. Okay. It happens way more often than I wish it would. But I can still take care of myself. I can still do the things because I am someone who values my health. So by being someone, now I can ask myself, what does that mean? Well, that means taking 10 minutes to go and do push-ups and burpees, like as much as I hate burpees, you know, things like that. But it's that belief that I'm someone who can make it happen no matter what that I need before I put the behaviors in place. What results are you looking for? What result, what do you want that you, you striving for, but you cannot get, but you've tried and you've changed your behaviors. You've, you've, um, started the habits. You have your habit tracker, you have your calendar, you have your, your willpower of these are the nine things that I'm going to do every day in order to get this result. And, and then you wonder why, and you're like, I read a book about how, how it worked for someone else. And I know it can work for me. I talked a few weeks ago about how you didn't take your starting point into consideration. Well, now you also need to take your beliefs into consideration. Do you see where we're going here? Do you see that this, to get what we want, there's more to it than simply setting a goal or deciding. There's more than setting habits. There's more than putting a to-do list together and adding that to your already busy life, your already overfilled schedule, your already overwhelmed brain. When we start looking at your beliefs, and we can change your beliefs. There's ways. That is something that I do in my uh, Shine On group uh, group program is we intentionally change our beliefs. We intentionally find our beliefs and change them. If you're interested in that, like go to my website, DM me, get on the wait list. Because there's only going to be a few spots for when I open that again. And I'm going to open it again in a couple of weeks to start in October. We want, there's so many things that we want. So many things that it becomes overwhelming. And then we just get defeated because we throw the behaviors. We know, we see it worked for Jane. We know logically that it worked for her. It can work for me. But have we addressed the emotional side of who we're being in order to get the results? That's part of the the past traumas. That's part of the old stories. That's part of the, um, well, the I've tried before and it didn't it didn't work then. So that that old belief that well, it's never going to work. All of those things t- are taken into consideration. But I'd like you to to take a few moments to look at one of the results that you want. Get quiet. Look at the behaviors that you're writing down. Those, And then ask yourselves, what are my beliefs about each of these? What do I think about each of these? And be honest with yourself. It's hard. When you start looking at the lies that your, your brain is serving you. But when you find those then you can start removing those and you can see like why you've been held back, why you're not doing what you want to do and why, you, why you're doing what you don't want to do. As Paul says, cause it, we haven't changed much. The same struggles Paul had are the same struggles we have, but we don't have to have those struggles. We have this beautiful thing called science. We have p- amazing minds who study diff- the brain to see why the the why the how the the biological side of what we want and how to get it so friend i want you to start really looking and asking yourself 
Why is it important? What do I believe about it? Where does that stem from? Where, where in my life is that belief showing up? And how else is it affecting my life and what I want? Those questions will actually start to crack open the, the why, the how, the what needs to change in order to have those transformations. All right, I'm going to close. And I, this is just something I wanted to share with you. And just your takeaway is that to have a problem with the results you're getting, when you're trying to get a result, you can't just look at the behavior. Because in order to, well, all your behaviors begin with a belief. And all your behaviors end in result. So it's the in between. You have, in order to get a behavior, you have to know your belief. Beliefs, then behaviors, and then results. It is a line that if you try to jump one or the other, if you try to skip out on, well, if you try to skip out on beliefs, you, beliefs alone won't get you anywhere. And actions and behaviors alone won't get you anywhere. You need that combination. And that's the... That's the secret sauce to actually making a goal work, to getting the results you want, to having the life that you want. Change your beliefs and change your life. It's as simple as that. All right. Well, friend, I hope to see you again soon. Make sure that if this podcast speaks to you, please go rate and review and share it with a friend. And if you want to go deeper, if you are ready to dive in, little steps and get, you want clarity on the beliefs that you're having, join Shine. Shine is our monthly membership and we meet one, we meet monthly and there's journal questions. There's a, a a coaching video every month that on a special topic that will help you start to crack away at what our beliefs are at understanding how you are wired Instead of telling you how to think, I teach you and I give you the, here's other ways. I, in other teaching you, instead of teaching what to think, I teach, I show you how. I show you ways to consider it from different perspectives, ways that if we start asking ourselves questions, our life, our beliefs get better. So that's what I do. That's what we do in Shine. And Well, I'm just building a community of women who are all willing to lift each other up and shine together because it's not easy to do this work. It is not easy to look at your flaws and look at the old stories and the lies. But when you start doing that and you're with other women who do it too, it's such a a weight lifted and the weight of joy, the weight of joy gets to come upon you. All right, friend, with that, choose joy until joy chooses you. I'll talk to you next week. Bye for now.